Hi, I'm Christoph Ebner and I will present our work Video See-Through Mixed Reality with Focus Cues, which is a collaboration between Stanford University and Graz University of Technology. Current commercially available solutions for mixed reality are not capable of providing focus cues and therefore they suffer from divergence accommodation conflict. This may result in eye strain and blurry vision. Here we can see an illustration of this problem. The user focuses on the hand, however since the virtual image plane is located farther in the back, what the user perceives is only a blurry representation of this label. And therefore providing focus cues in mixed reality remains an important topic that is actively researched. And possible solutions for virtual reality and optical see-through mixed reality include, among others, multifocal and varifocal displays. However, none of the existing work so far addresses video see-through devices, which come with entirely new problems and challenges. And in this work, we present our approach to video see-through mixed reality head-mounted displays with focus cues. And this is what our system looks like in action. So on the right side, we can see our prototype and also the user. And in the TV, there is a real-time simulation of the perceived image. So what the user sees, basically. Uh, so, and as the user looks around, the augmented butterflies are flying across the scene and one butterfly notices the hand and comes closer. And as the user focuses on this butterfly, please note how the background naturally gets blurry. And then the user focuses on the background and the butterfly and the hand blurs out. And again, focus to the butterfly. So let me get into the technical aspects of how this works. Basically for each frame we measure the virgin's distance of the user with an eye tracker and shift the virtual images of two stacked screens towards this measured distance. And this video here shows this basic principle for the scene with the butterflies. So the user verges on this butterfly and on the left we can see how the two screens are moved accordingly. And in order to capture the real environment, uh, cameras continuously capture a focal stack within the virtual image planes. And this enables us to display the real environment with correct defocus blur. We then augment the captured focal stack with the renderings and show a decomposition of the mixed stack on the display. So now let me quickly talk about our motivation of using this kind of unique setup of two stacked screens per eye. So the main reason why we use two screens instead of just a single one in a very focal setup is that two screens allow us to be tolerant against eye tracking errors. And Virgin's measurements in particular need very good eye tracking. So let's see what happens to captured content in our system if we would only have a single screen. This image here shows an erroneous Virgin's distance measurement where the user's eye verges to the butterfly, but the measured distance is off by a certain amount. The cameras are then focused to the erroneous virgin's distance and capture a blurred image of the butterfly. Further, the display is moved to the wrong distance, which creates an additional loss of contrast. And contrary to this scenario, our setup allows the user to focus anywhere within the volume spanned by the two screens. So within this volume, our system is tolerant against eye tracking errors. And additionally to this tolerance, uh, there are advantages compared to a pure multifocal setup as well. So we can achieve a large working volume with fewer screens, which results in a smaller form factor. And in order to implement this stacked very focal concept, uh, we built a prototype, which you have already seen at the very beginning of this presentation. So let me quickly give you an overview of the components we use here. For the screen stack, our system consists of two LCDs for each eye, which are optically combined by beam splitter. And both screens have a different distance to the beam splitter, so the virtual image of one panel will appear closer to the user than the virtual image of the other panel. Uh, furthermore, we have a pair of focus tunable lenses, or FDLs, which allow to shift the virtual images of both screens by changing the focal power. <clears throat> and additionally, we use a binocular eye tracker to measure the virgin's distance of the user, which we mounted uh, below the lenses. And for recording the environment, we use two industrial cameras and again two focus tunable lenses in order to control the focus distance of the cameras. 
Now let me quickly give you an overview of the pipeline we use to drive this display. So first in our pipeline, we capture the focal stack in order to obtain a collection of differently focused images, as can be seen here in this video. And next is motion compensation. Capturing a focal stack of moving objects or moving the HMD itself may lead to misaligned images in the stack. And therefore, for each frame, we need to realign the images, otherwise ghosting artifacts would appear. And the result of our motion compensation approach is an aligned focal stack, where the only difference between the images in the stack is due to varying focus distances. This video here shows a comparison between using an uncompensated focal stack and a compensated focal stack. And on the left, we can see pronounced ghosting artifacts for the uncompensated stack. And on the right, the same stack after compensation does not show these artifacts. In the meantime, while we capture and compensate, we render the augmentations and afterwards generate a synthetic focal stack for the renderings. And then we mix both the compensated captured stack and the rendered stack. And the results of this process can be seen here. So these are four images showing front and back focus of stacks from two scenes. And these images show the captured stacks only. So let's see what uh, they look like with augmentations. And as you can see here, the defocus blur of the capturings and augmentation matches. So finally, we decompose the focal stack onto the two screens using a tomographic reconstruction technique and we show the decomposition on the two LCD layers. And this is what a shot with fixed front focus on the chicken looks like filmed through the display. <coughs> so finally, this short clip demonstrates refocusing of a car scene. Uh, first, we focus on the yellow car in the front and then the focus will slowly shift towards the back as indicated by the slider on the left. And this is captured, rendered and displayed in real time. This is real eye tracking data and the refocusing in the video is the result of the user's eyes changing their actual focus distance. So the virgins indicator on the left is not some kind of artificial slider, but reflects real virgins distance measurements. And here you can see how the focus is now on the IEEE VR logo and the yellow car is now blurred out. So that's it from my side. If you are interested in our work, uh, refer to our paper. The paper also contains a much more detailed description of the rendering and capturing pipeline and further limitations and discussions uh, regarding the display. So finally, I want to thank my co-authors and thank you for listening to the whole presentation and I'm looking forward to your questions.